so yeah, I'll dive right into the new features. Um, I've been pretty active on chat uh, in answering questions, so uh, I won't be answering them or reading them as I'm going through this, but I'll come back and answer them. And we've got a bunch of other guys out there as well who are answering too. Um, but Golden Gate has changed a lot over the years. Uh, as you can see, this is just kind of a little history of what we've done just over the past seven or eight years. Um, Golden Gate 23i is no different. There is a huge amount of features in this release, just like Jeff said. Uh, when we started looking at, well, you know, we're going to have to change the way we do this slide, we said, screw it. We're just going to do a whole new slide that kind of covers some of those features. So as you can see, this is a, a really packed release. Um, it's been in development for many, many years. There was quite a long time between Golden Gate 21C being released and Golden Gate 23 AI. And it really gave us a long time, not only to make the release feature rich, but also make sure that when we do release it, it's stable and mature. This is a long-term release. So this release is gonna be out there for many, many years. Uh, I'll cover that during my second presentation. We'll get into the support timeframe, but it's gonna be supported until 2032. So we really wanna make sure that this really has everything that we can put into it and that it's gonna be available and supported and mature enough for you to use and rely on. I am gonna cover a couple of the features in more detail. All these things are all fully documented. So if you wanted to go back and look at what some of those new features are, get a deeper dive into them, uh, it's all in the documentation. Uh, or if you wanted a specific deep dive on some new feature or some portion of it, uh, feel free to reach out to your account team and they can always set up a call with one of the experts to go through it with you. Uh, so the first thing I wanna cover is really Golden Gate in Oracle 23 AI. There's a bunch that we've done with the database itself and kind of some of the major advantages of it. Jeff talked about being able to do AI processing with Golden Gate. And we're not just limited to the Oracle database AI features. We support MySQL HeatWave. Postgres has a number of different ways to support vector data, including the PG vector add-on. And so we support that. This is also included with AlloyDB, Amazon RDS, Aurora, all the different cloud flavors of Postgres. But then we also support Elasticsearch and OpenSearch and including uh, the different cloud versions of OCI, or excuse me, the different uh, vector processing within OCI itself. There's a couple of big use cases that we're already starting to see people use Golden Gate with for vector replication and AI support. And a lot of it is really just migrating vectors into the Oracle database. With Oracle's converged database program, uh, you can really do a lot of different things with that single database. You don't need to choose a specific database for each type of use case. Uh, if I want data warehousing, if I want AI, if I want OLTP, I can just put it all into a single Oracle database that can handle that kind of volume and work. Uh, I don't need to pick individual databases for each thing. And so we're seeing a lot of people kind of move back into the Oracle database because of that. Another one is being able to replicate and consolidate vector changes for multiple systems. So Golden Gate can actually replicate the underlying vector data from, for example, MySQL and move it into Oracle or PG vector and move it into Oracle. Uh, there are some nuances here with the vector technologies under the covers when you do, when you run the embedding algorithm, uh, it's really just changing that data into a bunch of numbers. Almost think of it like a GPS code. And so if I wanted to know the GPS location of San Francisco, uh, or a building in San Francisco, I can put that into a GPS algorithm and it'll pop out a bunch of uh, numbers in a longitude and latitude format. But for example, let's say I needed more detail. Maybe I not only want the longitude and latitude, but I also want the altitude of that building in San Francisco. Well, that's a different embedding algorithm that's gonna give me different information. Now, when I send that data out to the GPS embedding algorithm, it's going to come back with my latitude coordinates, my longitude coordinates, and my altitude coordinates. Uh, in the same way the, the algorithms and the AI systems work inside the databases, is that depending on the number of dimensions and the algorithm you're using, that data is going to be stored differently. So Golden Gate can replicate the actual vectors data themselves, the, that longitude, latitude, altitude numbers, as long as the algorithms and the dimensions are the same between the two. If, the, if they're different, and that's definitely possible too, then have Golden Gate replicate the actual base data that is making up those algorithms, and then Golden Gate can call 
the embedding algorithms on the target database to re-embed the data. And so this way you can actually replicate between uh, different algorithms, different embedding models, and different dimensions. We're also seeing customers use it with multi-cloud and multiple active vector databases. They wanna be able to scale these environments out. And so they're using Golden Gate Active Active to be able to do that, uh, where they have users making changes on all the systems, everything is read write across the board. And this is also multi-cloud too. So if your database resides in Azure, uh, GCP, AWS, OCI, we can replicate between all of them and even on-premise too. And then we're also seeing customers use Golden Gate to stream vector changes to search engines, like NVIDIA, Cohere, uh, all through the OCI system. So it's very smooth, very elegant. Another major thing we're seeing with Golden Gate is assistance with retrieval augmented generation or RAG. And Jeff kind of touched on this a little earlier. And so the way that this works is pretty straightforward. Um, a user's natural language is gonna be encoded uh, into AI vector search data. That goes in, the vector search is then gonna go out and look at a bunch of documents that are stored in the database or on the web to try and match the question and answer it. Uh, then the content is sent back to the generative AI system to try and answer that question. And then the user gets their answer. Now, one of the problems with this is that the information that they're getting, it may not always be up to date. And that's really where Golden Gate's gonna shine. Golden Gate is that solution that's gonna pull data from all these other systems and keep your different environments up to date. Just like we would keep reporting our data warehouse systems up to date with the most relevant information, we can do the same thing for your AI. And so now your AI systems can also have the most relevant information. As Golden Gate is pushing the data in from these other systems, it makes it very easy to call the embedding algorithms to automatically embed that data as soon as it gets pushed in. And that's kind of where the slide falls in as well. You know, we can pull from so many different technologies, so many different applications, so many different databases that it just makes it second nature kind of to use Golden Gate to also feed your vector hubs and your vector databases. Through the Golden Gate Streaming Analytics product, we can also do actionable AI and machine learning directly from the streaming pipelines. Uh, so this is essentially hooking into a Golden Gate trail file to do real-time analysis and AI on your data as it's flowing through Golden Gate. And you can do similarity searches, machine learning, Onyx, uh, AI and ML service integration. There's a lot of great things the streaming analytics product can do. Uh, so to quickly summarize, you know, why Golden Gate is good for AI. First, it's to improve your retrieval and augmented generation, get that real-time data in there, and then also to be able to tune your models and, and present the correct model to your data consumers. Uh, there's so many different algorithms out there. There's so many different changes to how those algorithms are being used. And it's often difficult to choose which is the best one to use. Because Golden Gate can replicate the data to different systems, you can then run different models on each of these different databases. Once you find the model and the dimensions that makes your needs and requirements, it makes it very easy to then switch that database into production, just using traditional Golden Gate replication technology. And so it's kind of a, an easy fit into that as well. So we've got a whole bunch of changes for the Oracle database as well. Uh, we've got new roles, there's new DDL notification. Uh, another big change is being able to capture directly from a pluggable database instead of from the root container in a multi-tenant environment. Uh, some of these are actually pretty cool. And there's a lot more besides just the ones in that nice little chart. Uh, so to get into some of the more important ones, we've made some changes to how supplemental logging works. Uh, for those customers you're using things like dish and base redefinition, this is really, really important. In Oracle 12C, Oracle started changing the way that DDL operations were handled under the covers. So you could actually perform something like an alter table add column while a user was actually manipulating that table or had an, an you know locks against rows in that table. And these DDL operations no longer required exclusive locks. However, if you had supplemental logging on that table, which is required by Golden Gate, these locks would need to be exclusive again. And so it kind of defeated the purpose of having all these really cool changes if supplemental logging 
couldn't handle the multiple versions within a single transaction. And so now with, Go with Oracle 23 AI, uh, this is not really a Golden Gate change, it's a database change. They've enhanced the database so that supplemental logging can handle multiple versions and multiple structures of a single table within it. So now you can go back to performing DDL on tables while there are transactions going on within that table too. And Golden Gate fully handles this and supports it. So now the product itself also allows you to handle multiple DDL and multiple structure changes within a single transaction. There is kind of a special nuance here. Uh, if you're replicating from Oracle to some non-Oracle technology that doesn't have this, uh, you could get into some issues because of the way that uh, multiple transactions are going to be coming across with multiple different structures. Uh, and so this is just something you'll have to be aware of. In most cases, Golden Gate will handle this automatically through its column mapping and matching of column data. Uh, but just be careful with it. Other things that we've done within the Oracle database that are kind of important is where we've got integration with Oracle Key Vault 21.4. And this changes the way that we do our encryption for our trail files. And so now you have a master key. Uh, in the past, this master key was used to encrypt the trail files with the same key every time. Now we're actually generating, we're using that master key to generate a new key for every trail file. So it's even more secure. We're also integrating with a number of different uh, identity management providers, including Azure Active Directory, IAM, and IDCS, so that when you create your users in that environment, you'll be able to bring them into your Golden Gate system. And Golden Gate will actually connect into an authorization profile that you've set up for that to be able to bring in those users and roles. And then for Oracle Database itself, for setting up captures and uh, extracts and replicates, We've got new roles within the database. So you don't need to use the DBMS Golden Gate auth grant admin privilege anymore. You just simply grant OGG capture role to whichever user is going to be running extract or OGG apply role to whichever user is going to be running the replicat. So this makes it a lot simpler, very, very smooth. Uh, and then we've also extended the passwords too. So now the uh, Golden Gate passwords can be up to 1,024 bytes. Jeff had kind of touched on the high availability clusters. I want to kind of dig into that a little bit further uh, before I pass things off to Dennis to go into more of the features. Uh, but we've got an, you know, kind of a, a number of ways to deploy Golden Gate for high availability today. But they're all complex. A lot of them require configuration of Oracle Rack. They require configuration of DBFS or ACFS. You've got to set up clusterware. Uh, there's a 70 or 80 page white paper out there that goes through all this. There's numerous presentations. It's tricky. We wanted to make it super simple. So for customers in OCI, all they need to do is check a box. Do you want Golden Gate to be deployed for high availability or not? Yes, great. It's going to be automatically set up for you. For customers running on premise, it's going to be a little different. There will be a very short paper, <laughs> just a couple of pages, uh, that actually talks about how this works and what it does. And then what you'll do is you'll install Golden Gate in three or more locations. Once you've installed Golden Gate in three or more locations, you specify one of those locations or one of those deployment as what we call the leader. And then you specify the other ones as the followers. Once you've done that, Golden Gate starts syncing itself up within that system. And it becomes very cool. So how it works is pretty straightforward. You've got your Golden Gate leader here, and then you've got your followers, and then you can have an optional observer if you want to. Now, everything that goes on within my leader is gonna be duplicated within my followers. So if I go and add an extract here on my leader, my followers are also gonna get that same extract. If I create a trail file, the followers get the same trail file. Um, as data is sent, as it's being replicated, these followers are mimicking that action in the background. If this leader dies, one of the followers will be promoted through this raft consensus model to the new leader, and it'll pick up right where it left off. So those of you that are really savvy about Golden Gate are going, okay, well, that's great. That'll work just fine for the replicat, but how's it gonna handle the checkpoint files and all the checkpoint data that's on disk? Haha, <laughs> that's where we've changed things around a little bit. So with Golden Gate 23, 
a lot of the checkpoint file information we need has actually been moved into the a checkpoint table in the source database. And so now you don't need to worry about your checkpoint files. Everything can be done. There's no shared storage here, no DBFS, no ACFS, no clusterware, no rack. Uh, your environments can be deployed in different locations too. So I can have each of my environments set up in a different region or a different uh, availability domain, different availability zone. Uh, I can have them in different data centers. I can also scale this up across multiple data centers. So let's say that I'm using Golden Gate to replicate across the globe. I can have Golden Gate set up in one data center and configured for high availability there. I'm connecting remotely to all my databases uh, and replication is continuing on and moving as normal. I can set the same thing up in my second data center and even my third. That way if Golden Gate fails in any single one of these locations, it'll be moved over very quickly uh, and it'll be able to recover right from where it left off. And this is all automatic um, and the user, there's no user intervention required for any of this. It's also zero data loss. So as part of these failover, even if there's a catastrophic event that wipes out one of these servers, due to the way that we've built the checkpointing within the extract and replicate, we can guarantee there'll be no duplicate data and no data loss as well. So it's, it's a really, really elegant solution. Uh, do we expect a lot of customers to start using. This feature is not available in the service today. Uh, it is something that will be available uh, towards the later half of this calendar year. Um, so we're hoping to have more announcements about it uh, during Cloud World this year. And with that, I'm gonna go and head it off to Dennis. 